Good day, my fellow freedom loves and sovereign thinkers. This is LL3's newest podcast. My name is Craig, and I am broadcasting within the beautiful swampy mangroves of South Florida. Yeah, nice blue skies, and we've seen the uh, chemtrails at this time. But um, so far, so good. It's like the warmest state in the union. <laughs> well, today I'm gonna have a have a couple of topics or articles I'm going to be reading and give you my intake on it. And one's going to be from um, Lily Dane entitled Arizona Passes Anti NDAA Bill to Nullify Indefinite Detention. And thereafter, it's from endthelie.com. And this one, this one will be UN official North Korea should face international charges for crimes against humanity. I'm going to be like reading this, all these little goodies here and give you my view. And I will put this on my, both links on my Spreaker page as well. So hopefully, it's been a while, just been, um, you know, just been busy. And I haven't really done the upgrade my uh, SoundCloud account yet. So forgive me, all you SoundCloud listeners out there. However, you can still get me on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. And now I'm going to be reading the first article of the day. Arizona passes anti-NDAA bill to nullify indefinite detention. Once again, it's by Lily Dane, which was written today, February 18, 2014, via the Daily Sheeple. Yesterday, an Arizona State Senate committee passed the Restoring Constitutional Governments Act, SB 1291, giving the initial approval to a bill that nullifies indefinite detention under the National Defense Authorization Act, also known as NDAA or any other federal law which might claim to authorize the same. PANDA reports the the legislation drafted by the Patriot Coalition is the strongest in the nation as it explicitly prohibits the laws of war from being used on non-soldiers in Arizona and Arizona citizens anywhere and will punish any person, including federal or international agents, who attempts to utilize those powers. They have some links to back it up as well, so Daily Sheep is a good site. So check them out. I will continue. The number of states taking action against a definite detention provision under the NDAA is growing. If the bill passes into law, Arizona would become the fifth state to take steps toward nullifying indefinite detention, joining Alaska, California, Michigan, and Virginia. The New Hampshire House recently approved a ban on indefinite detention provision unanimously, calling it unconstitutional. That bill is moving to the state Senate for further consideration. Arizona's bill was introduced by State Senator Judy Burgess. It will ban the state of Arizona from enforcing sections 1021 and 1022 of the 2012 NDAA. These sections give authority to the federal government to indefinitely detain anyone, anywhere, without charge or trial. The bill also covers indefinite detention without due process, authorized under any similar laws or authority enacted or claimed by Congress or the President. Adam Henriksen, the Arizona 10th Amendment Center State Coordinator, and Dan Johnson, the founder of Panda, drafted the bill. The Arizona 10th Amendment Center explains that states that are working towards nullifying the indefinite detention provision of the NDAA are following James Madison's blueprint for stopping federal outreach. In Federalist 46, he, Madison, argued that a refusal to comply with officers of the Union, along with other actions at the state and local level, would create a situation where the federal government would have an almost impossible time enforcing their acts. When several states join together and do the same, Madison said it would present obstructions which the federal government would hardly be willing to encounter. And I do have that in my past archives under Federalist Papers number 46. You can look that up, and I do have that title. All right? If you'd like to support Arizona in passing this bill, you can do so here. There's a link to that. 
To learn more about dangerous indefinite detention provision of the NDAA and how you can take action in your state, visit Panda's website, which is linked to that as well. I have to say, it's a fantastic start for Arizona on taking the initiative on this tyrannical bill. We don't need another executive order, 9066 revisited. It's a time when um, President Franklin Dover Roosevelt signed executive, that particular executive order that detained any enemy combatants. During that time, it was mostly Japanese Americans, plus Germans and Italians as well. That are Americans, but they have, the, based on the national background, they were detained as well without due process. And I do, I am very happy that Arizona's taking this stance and every state within this union should do the same, including my great state of Florida. I have to get involved in this as well. Peti I'm trying to petition and anyone that lives in Florida need to take the initiative. Go to 10th Center.com and just look under NDAA. It gives you the draft. You try to like do a little reiterate it, re um, revise it a little bit within your state or county. And just send it off to your elected servants and have other people get involved in this as well. Because as our duty as citizens and natural born freedom loving sovereign thinkers, we need to take a stance. Remember to preserve freedom, we must exercise eternal vigilance. And I have to say, great article, and I will um, have passed this on my Facebook page, and I will post this on my Spreaker account as well. So uh, just bear with me. And um, I'll go and hit this next one here, which is from the Daily Lie, which is again entitled, UN Official North Korea Should Face International Charges for Crimes Against Humanity. It's from End the Lie, by End the Lie. It looks like it was, doc, it was posted today. I got it on my Twitter account. And thank you, my, bro, my brother out there. And a big shout out to him as well. And to all my followers from Twitter, you know, thank you, thank you also because, uh, all we're doing is spreading the love and just spreading and, sh and sharing this information to everyone we knew, including our enemies, because you never know. We may have some differences, but if we have something in common, we can be very powerful. And that's why those bastards, who are so-called leaders, don't like, you, don't like you to do that. Well, you know what I say? I can care less. But I will proceed with this article. After the release of a UN report documenting the widespread brutal human rights abuses, the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights, Navi Palay, called on world powers to, ref for, to refer North Korea to the prosecutor of the International Criminal Court. In the past, it was reported that some 80 people were publicly executed for crimes, ranging from possession of Bibles and watching foreign films. Christians are regularly targeted in the country, forcing outside groups to airdrop Bibles and other literatures for the underground Christian community. UN investigators said that North Korean security officials, potentially even Kim Jong-un, could face charges for ordering the systematic torture, starvation, and killings of North Koreans. Officials have said that the abuses are comparable to the Nazi-era atrocities, according to Reuters. We, need, we now need strong international leadership to follow up on the grave findings of the Commission of Inquiry. Pelé said in a statement, I therefore call on international community in line with the report's recommendations to use all the mechanisms at its disposal to ensure accountability, including referral to the International Criminal Court. Chinese officials have already harshly criticized the report, saying it is unreasonable criticism. The New York Times pointed out that this criticism may mean that Beijing will move to leverage their veto power in the United Nations Security Council to block any potential action. We believe that politicizing human rights issues is not conducive toward improving a country's human rights, said Hua Chungying, an international foreign ministry spokeswoman. We believe that talking, taking human rights issues to the International Criminal Court is not helpful to improving a country's human rights situation. However, CNN point out that China said they would not allow human rights charges to move forward in the ICC before the report was even released. Unsurprisingly, the government of the Democratic People's Republic of Korea completely rejected the report. It is nothing more than an instrument of a political plot 
aimed at sabotaging the socialist system by defaming the dignified images of the DPRK and creating an atmosphere of international pressure under the pretext of human rights protection, the government said in a statement. The report details some quite horrific practices, including the killings of hundreds of thousands of people since the 1950s. The Washington Post notes that killing do not technically mean the definition of genocide, since they kill people for their beliefs not along national, ethnic, racial, or religious lines. Well, to me, it's more like democide that kill everyone that disagrees with the government. <laughs> That's just my intake on it, on my view, but I will proceed. Michael Donald Kirby, a retired Australian judge who was head of the panel, said that there are, so, there are far too many human reports and none of action. Well, now it's time for action. We can't say we didn't know, Kirby said. Kirby spoke to reporters in Geneva on Monday, saying that he hopes the reports will spur the international community to actually take action. I hope that the international community will be moved by the detail, the amount, the long duration, and great suffering by many tears that have existed in North Korea to act on the great crimes against humanity, he said. The 400-page report, based on interviews with over 320 witnesses, experts over nearly a year, was released on Monday. We would love to hear your opinion. We took, we took a look at your, at your story tips and even your original writings. If you like it to get published, please email us at contact at end the lie.com I can say this for sure there is a huge amount of tyranny in North Korea as also I have to agree on this but they're just an example problem with the United Nations there is a lot of criminality in that entity as well and the fact is this the international criminal courts they have a policy in there that I don't have it on the top of my head, unfortunately. But you can look up, you can look it up. If not, I'll just try to post it on there as soon as I can. I'm just paraphrasing that even if you found not guilty in their court system, they can have the opportunity to try you again, again, and again. So, instant to proven guilty. No double jeopardy in the United States, but in the United Nations, it seems called multiple jeopardy. It doesn't matter. They keep going and going and going until they want you, to, they, until you belly up. I am not a fan of the North Korean government, nor any other, any other um, political figureheads or spectrums in general, because I always believe that freedom, again, to preserve your personal freedom, we have to exercise eternal vigilance. And uh, that's why when um, Thomas Jefferson wrote the Declaration of Independence, he made it really, really clear that it's the individual's duty to overthrow governments when they become usurped. So technically, even with the United States, you never trust the government, period. And I got people telling me on, on Facebook one time, oh, if you don't trust the government, you don't support the Constitution or the Bill of Rights, give me a break. Start doing your homework. I recommend, once again, look at go, on, go online, look at Death by Government. They, you, get, you get the book, or there's a website, too, by R.J. Rummel from uh, University of Hawaii. He was a political scientist, and he, he posted that on his webpage. You just definitely just type that up. But, um... How I see this, yeah, okay, they do have a lot of human rights violations, and by my opinion, the UN International Criminal Court, it's a really uh, sketchy, I'm a skeptic on their system. I don't really, I'm not really pleased with their policies, all right, because they believe in a one world government, one world religion, your inalienable rights should be a privilege, they should tell you when to eat, when to have sex, what to, what to think. And I don't believe in that. So that's why I'm real, I have to really question the United Nations. However, it is a good article, I will say that. And Christians are being targeted like any other 
Creed. The whole thing is, it's called scapegoat hunting.